don't you hate it when you're at a party and you don't know anyone? But you know what's worse than that? Going to a party hosted by someone you know who just happened to be a mass murderer, who had killed hundreds and thousands and who is also the most powerful warlord of the era. You've heard about the Red Wedding, Black Dinner and other bloody feasts, but have you ever heard of the most awkward banquet in history? Well, let me tell you about the Banquet at Home Gate. The two central characters of this story are sworn brothers, Liu Bang, the peasant-born scoundrel who would eventually establish the Han Dynasty, and Xiang Yu, the greatest warrior of the era. The two used to fight together to overthrow the tyrannical Qin Dynasty, and they were promised by the King of Chu that whoever entered Xianyang, the capital of Qin first, will be made the King of Guangzhong region, the richest area of the empire. While Xiang Yu was preoccupied fighting against the colossal main force of the Qin Empire, Liu Bang used the opportunity to slip in and took the defenseless capital. By right, he would be made the King of Guangzhong, but Xiang Yu felt betrayed because he made the most sacrifice and defeated the bulk of the Qin army. He deserved his just reward. So with 200,000 Qin prisoners of war in tow, he and his rebel army barreled down to Shenyang seeking justice. Meanwhile, down at the former capital of Qin, Liu Bang was drunk on all of the luxury the palace could provide. Snap out of it, bro! Look at the big picture! Liu Bang was a peasant and he got his vices. Lots of them actually. But luckily for him, he's got plenty of great buddies who he could rely on to guide him back to the straight and narrow. Xiang Yu and his army was coming, and if he wanted to survive this impending confrontation, he had to take action soon. Oh, come on, we've got plenty of time. He's got to babysit 200,000 POWs. How fast can he get here? Report, sir. Xiang Yu had blown through the gate of the Hangu Guan Pass. He is coming with a combined army of 400,000. <laughs> nope, Liu Bang didn't have much time. What happened to his 200,000 Qin POWs? They were all killed. 200,000 is a massive number, and number in ancient battles often get conflated. But the fact remained that Xiang Yu massacred all the defenseless soldiers under his watch, just because he considered them to be a burden. It was a shocking news, but Liu Bang wasn't surprised. Xiang Yu had a history of brutality, before this, he had massacred whole cities. If Liu Bang doesn't do anything now, he would become another historical statistic. But how could he even stand a chance against the greatest warrior of the era? Besides, he only had 100,000 men. He can't win. But wait a minute. He may not have Xiang Yu's martial prowess, but he had something he could use to overcome this trial. Or to be more accurate, it is something he didn't have. Brother, I missed you, my dear sworn brother. It was his sense of shame. Who dared to close the Hanguquan gate on my dearest brother and keep him away from me? Who? Let me at him, let me at him. Liu Bang is shameless. And that's one of his superpowers. He also employed a tactic a proud aristocratic warrior like Xiang Yu is unfamiliar with. Groveling. Following his strategist Fan Zheng's advice, Xiang Yu had actually prepared to assassinate Liu Bang on his signal. But now that he is bewitched by Liu Bang's godly charms and groveling, he ignored all of Fan Zheng's signals. Liu Bang had upheld the law and order of Xianyang and did not touch any of the riches in the treasury, all just to keep them safe for Xiang Yu to claim. He said, It may seem like a proof of his loyalty, and it may have fooled everyone but it rang Fan Zheng's alarm bells. It is a sign that Liu Bang had evolved from being a short-sighted peasant into a leader with foresight who could resist powerful temptations. And if he's not moved by the mountain of wealth, then it could only mean that he is aiming for something much greater. Fan Zheng was convinced more than ever that he must get rid of Liu Bang now, before he festered into a greater threat. 
if his mother won't act, then he will do it on his own. So they held a banquet in Liu Bang's honor. And as part of the attraction, Xiang Yu's cousin performed a sword dance. Kinda odd, Xiang Yu thought, since he would much prefer to see his beautiful consort, Yu, do the dance. But this was actually part of Fan Zheng's plan to kill Liu Bang by choreographical malfunction. But suddenly, Xiang Yu's uncle, Xiang Bo, joined the dance and used himself to cover Liu Bang. Xiang Bo was actually a close friend of Zhang Liang, Liu Bang's advisor, and he was persuaded to help Liu Bang the previous night. Overnight conversion. Godly charms, guys. But despite his effort, he can't keep up forever against his younger and stronger nephew. So Zhang Liang unleashed Fan Kui. Hey, what's the big idea? Why are you trying to kill my bro after all he's done for you? Fan Kui was Liu Bang's brother-in-law. He was a butcher and a warrior. Despite his rough demeanor, he was a straight talker and he could connect to Xiang Yu, warrior to warrior. Fan Kui rebuked Xiang Yu, saying that if he killed Liu Bang after demonstrating his loyalty, then he is no better than the tyrannical and corrupt Qin, who he hated so much. So apparently, Fan Kui pressed all the right buttons and his words froze Xiang Yu. After an extended period of silence, he told Fan Kui to sit down and join the party. <laughs> oh, wow, that was intense. It's, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool now. <laughs> I almost wet my pants. Whoops, actually, let me go to the toilet to clean myself. <laughs> Liu Bang's groveling had successfully established to everyone that he was a loyal follower of Xiang Yu, and he is not a threat. If Xiang Yu had him killed, then it would sow distrust among his own followers. But still, Xiang Yu could change his mind any time. So, where is Liu Bang anyway? Apparently, Liu Bang had escaped when he pretended to go to the toilet. And so, to end the night, Fan Kui presented Xiang Yu with some parting gift, and they booked it out of there. You foolish child! You have doomed us all! Despite Fan Zheng's reaction, Xiang Yu still wasn't convinced that a pathetic worm like Liu Bang was a threat at all. A few days later, Xiang Yu and his men marched into Xianyang. He looted the population, executed the last king of Qin, and burned everything down. Not even the dead was spared. Over 2,000 years later, when archaeologists found the terracotta warriors, almost all of them were found to be broken, and all the weapons were looted. It was speculated that Xiang Yu's army were the culprit. The fire in Xianyang was said to have burned for three whole months. With Xiang Yu acting as de facto overlord, he divided the realm to his leisure into 18 kingdoms and ignored King Huai's promise to Liu Bang. Why would he listen to his puppet king anyway? Oh wait, King Huai is technically the emperor now. Ha! Huh, but a puppet emperor is still a puppet. Consequently, Liu Bang was assigned the worst piece of land in the realm, Han. And to make it worse, three Qin generals who had surrendered to Xiang Yu were placed near him to guard against his possible comeback. To further allay Xiang Yu's suspicion, Liu Bang followed Zhang Liang's advice to burn the gallery road to Han, making it even more difficult to bring his army back. And that was the last piece of advice his advisor could give him before he had to return to the king of Han, since he was part of their aristocracy after all. But Zhang Liang wouldn't be the only one to leave him. The land of Han was so bad, even his soldiers started to desert him. And before he knew it, even his best friend and confidant, Xiao He, was nowhere to be found. Liu Bang was crushed. His dreams, his ambitions, everything seemed to be over for him. But then suddenly, Xiao He returned. Xiao He, where the heck were you? And he brought with him great news. He had to leave to chase down a deserter and had succeeded to bring him back. Liu Bang did not appreciate this man's talent when he was in their army. And now it is time to change all that. This man is the key to their victory, Han Xin. Xiao He also had a confession to make. When he was told not to take anything from the Qin Palace, he did not listen. No? He wasn't after money or jades. What he took were the maps and documents of Qin. With this intel and Han Xing, 
they can still win. In 206 BCE, dissatisfied with Xiang Yu's arrangement, the state of Qi annexed its neighboring land and the state of Cao was formed. Xiang Yu, distracted by the disturbance nearby, allowed Liu Bang's side to make their move. Han Xing had his soldiers pretend to fix the gallery road to attract the attention of the neighboring kingdoms. While their attention is glued to one side, Han Xing attacked from another direction. With Han Xing as the commander-in-chief of Liu Bang's army, he easily defeated the Three Chins. In the future, Han Xing will be known as the greatest general of the era, but right now he still had a lot to prove. With the Chins gone, Liu Bang advanced into Guangzhou. Because Xiang Yu had been ruling heavy-handedly, the king of Han was killed, and a series of events eventually led to Zhang Liang returning to Liu Bang. And this time, he is staying for good. As if heaven itself was on his side, King Huai, now Emperor Yi, died mysteriously. Whether Xiang Yu was the murderer or not, it doesn't matter. Everyone was convinced that he did it. So Liu Bang gathered a coalition army in the name of justice, and his rank swelled to 560,000 men. It's payback time, baby! So in 205 BCE, Liu Bang advanced to Pengcheng and took Xiang Yu's capital while he was quelling the rebellion at Qi. This is it! With this kind of overwhelming number, Liu Bang can't possibly lose. Xiang Yu will be finished soon, he thought. But before that, it is time for family reunion and some early celebration. Which is always a bad idea, because Xiang Yu, with a detachment of mere 30,000 soldiers, quickly rushed back to his capital. Catching the coalition off guard, he crushed and routed them. Liu Bang's army may be almost 20 times the size of Xiang Yu's army, but the difference in quality between them was overwhelming. Liu Bang suffered the most embarrassing defeat in his life, and many of his family members were captured. During his escape, Xiang Yu's men even saw something very scandalous that Liu Bang did. The disastrous defeat led to other kings deserting him, and some have even switched sides to Xiang Yu. This war had become deeply personal for the two of them, and the stakes had become so high, neither side is going to let up even as bodies started to pile up. Xiang Yu's force was clearly superior to Liu Bang's, but no matter how many times he crushed the cockroach, he just kept returning with more men. Liu Bang had trustworthy men like Xiao He handling his logistics, brilliant strategists like Zhang Liang guiding him, and excellent generals like Han Xing, who's been winning wars up north and had started to encircle Xiang Yu. Meanwhile, Xiang Yu was getting isolated. His generals were bought over, and he had foolishly fallen for Liu Bang's trick and dismissed his advisor, Fan Zheng. So in his desperation, Xiang Yu decided to do something very uncharacteristic of himself. It is something cowardly even, and reached out to Liu Bang. In 204 BCE, on Guangwu Mountain, Liu Bang received an ultimatum from Xiang Yu. Liu Bang, surrender now, or you will see your father get chopped up and cooked into soup. Liu Bang's heart almost shattered as he saw his helpless father in Xiang Yu's grasp. He can't believe what he is seeing. Xiang Yu is brutal and cruel against his enemies, but is he really going to stoop so low and use his defenseless father as hostage? It looks like Xiang Yu finally got the upper hand now, but he knows that his plan is not foolproof. If that scandalous thing his soldier reported was true, then his plan would be ruined. So what will Liu Bang do now? And what is that scandalous thing? Well, you will find out in the next episode. Subscribe and press the bell button so that you won't miss it. And as usual, like, comment, and share the video if you've been entertained by it. And until next time, stay cool, my bros.